Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be comparing two operating systems and two machines right after this. So I've been interested in doing the, uh, a performance uh, comparison between the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 for some time. I, there's a lot of benchmark, uh, that, that pe benchmarks that others have done already, um, but I thought I would throw Ubuntu's 1910 server into the mix because they have a version that is built strictly for Raspberry Pi and compare the Ubuntu, uh, their operating system against Raspbian, as well as compare the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. So before we do that, though, I think it probably would be helpful to talk a little bit about some of the background and some of the terms, uh, so that at least we have a common uh, agreement on <laughs> what we mean by things. So one of the original ways to describe computing performance, and that is what I'm going to measure today in a benchmark, is just computing performance or compute. And the first way was MIPS, and that's millions of instructions per second. That term dates all the way back to the early 60s, and, and they constructed a number of benchmarks that were used then. Dry stones, uh, when it came out later, I actually solidified the, the, the meaning of, of MIPS and also it defined uh, the criteria for it. So a MIP, one MIP is based on 1,757 dry stones per second. And that was the score that the BAX 11780 uh, was able to perform at and that became the one MIP score. Uh, and, and that has carried through to this day, although MIPS is generally not accepted uh, not well accepted as a way to measure performance, simply because computer architectures have changed so much that it's really now the meaning, meaningless <laughs> indicator of performance. So, uh, and, that's, and that's really kind of where that is. But I'm going to include that here today in my benchmark simply for historical reasons and no other reason. MFLOPs, million floating operation point, uh, operations per second. Floating point, op, uh, floating point operations per second. Uh, and then there's uh, KWIPs, or MWIPs as it's called now, which is whetstones per second. If you look back a little bit back in time at some of the originators and some of the machines that broke the million uh, operation, floating point operations per second barriers, that would be the Cray-1, which produced 160 MFLOPs. The XMP uh, got to 800. Grade 2, 1.9 giga, gigaflops per second, and that was a pretty major milestone. The Cray YMP, uh, 2.1 gigaflops uh, was what it did. Now, that might sound great, but uh, the phone you have in your pocket will outperform any of those machines at, at a much less cost <laughs> and at much less power. Uh, Whetstones uh, was, is a general purpose benchmark that is, was meant to uh, compare performance of many computers. And um, that was introduced in 1972. One of the things I would say about that is that the problem that you had in the early days of trying to determine whether or not the machine you were about to purchase was faster than the one you had, the only way you could really do it was to take your app and recompile it on the new machine and run it. Well, that was more easier said than done <laughs> because doing conversions uh, took a lot of time. There were differences in the compiler spec. There was differences in the way you had to access data. And so, yeah, that was massively different. And if you were in Fortran, you were worrying about, uh, you know, the word size of the machine. So there was a lot to worry about. And so the, the idea with the whetstone was to come up with a standard way that I could give you a whetstone program and I could keep a whetstone program. We could run them, compare the results, and then we would know that that machine running whetstones is faster than the one than the other one, or vice versa. So, I mean, that was the whole purpose. Uh, the Linpack benchmark came out in 1979, and it was designed to take a portion of the full Linpack. Linpack is a library of algebraic functions, <clears throat> and and then come up with a standard way to run those in a benchmark that would produce. A result that would again allow me to compare uh, performance spec between one machine and another. 
Linpack is still used in the top 500 supercomputers as one of the tools to establish who has the fastest supercomputer in the world. And they do those calculations about, well, it's twice a year, once in April, once in November, although the last one came out in June, but usually it's twice a year. Tristones, uh, that came out in 1984. There's two versions. There's 1.1 and 2.1. 1.1 was accused of having over-optimization, so it kind of skewed the results too much. So 2.1 was developed to address that. Uh, and that was used to uh, compare Unix machines. So at that time, that was the method that you used to compare one Unix piece of hardware to another. Uh, and again, there was problems in portability, uh, especially between AT&T's System 5 and BSD. There were differences in how you did networking. There was differences in how the uh, system uh, did uh, pipes and all that kind of stuff. There. But uh, so, so that was the reason for that. There was, a, and it was the original uh, output was dry stones per second. And again, we, as we said, it was changed to MIPS later. Livermore kernels or Livermore loops, uh, as, it's, as, as it's commonly known as in, when you look at the benchmark, uh, was produced for the first supercomputers in 1986. And it was really designed, it's a loop within a loop that's, that takes that takes number of passes through and then computes it. So the first pass, it does uh, a single array, and then it does a double array, and then it does a triple array or a vector. And that was to allow them to get a gauge of how well supercomputers perform one to another. Um, and I, that was really meant more for uh, single instruct, multiple data, uh, architected machines. Uh, and so it's not quite as popular today as Linpack is, because Linpack can use multiple architectures in, in order to uh, compare performance results. But if you use Livermore loops, then the geometric mean is the official way of, of reporting the M-flops. So the hardware I'm going to use today <clears throat> is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. That's based on a Cortex-53. Uh, it's a 1.4 gigahertz processor, has one gigabyte of memory. It has a VidCore 4 uh, C GPU. It's built into the uh, SOC. And the cost of that is about 35 bucks, as we all know. Raspberry Pi 4B is the other one. That's a Cortex-72. They're both four internal core CPUs. And the Cortex-72 runs at 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, it's a four gig of RAM. There are versions in one gig and two gig and four gig. And of course the one gig is still 35 bucks. Uh, and it has a, a, a different GPU, which is the VidCore 6, which has a, a lot more processing capability than the older one. So the one I'm using is about fifty-five dollars. They're about uh, they're about uh, to do the test. So the operating system I'm using is uh, a Raspbian uh, Buster Lite version, which came out in September of 2019. Uh, that's based on kernel 419, 419 and it's a 32-bit kernel and 32-bit apps and compilers and libraries. Uh, the Ubuntu server is 19.10 for Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4. That uses kernel 5.3. It's a 64-bit kernel, 64-bit apps, because it's all based on the ARCH64 architecture. I know, it's probably not a, a fair fight, but it, it, that is what we have to compare. If I go to the Raspbian site and I download their OS, that's what I'm going to get. If I go to the Ubuntu site and I download their OS for Raspbian, that's what I'm going to get. So it, it may not be fair, but it's fair according to what is available. And so it's regrettable, but I don't. I, there is a beta for si the, a 64-bit kernel for Raspbian, but I don't do benchmarks on beta software. I uh, might look at that later, but right now this is what we have to work with. So it may be a little bit unfair. Um, the Whetstone benchmark, uh, the first one uh, that I ran was uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Ubuntu is faster, of course, than the, than the Raspbian. It is not double the performance, however, because Whetstone uses uh, some floating point operations as well. They're single precision, but they do use some floating point. Uh, but clearly, both of the Raspbian Pi 4s, either operating system is much faster than the Raspbian Pi 3. And it is noticeable performance difference. Linpack, um, 
this one starts to really uh, stretch a little bit. The, uh, there's two different benchmark scores here. One's for single precision, that's the green bar, and the light blue is double precision. So you actually have two numbers for each benchmark. But the interesting thing here is that the double precision for the Pi Ubuntu is <laughs> just slightly faster than the single precision Raspbian. And if you, uh, uh, to me, that points pretty, uh, pretty clearly to the difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit architecture. Uh, but if you look overall, there's, I mean, Raspberry Pi 3 isn't, isn't even in the, they're not even in the game uh, as far as performance. Uh, the dry stone benchmarks, uh, not quite double uh, on Ubuntu, pretty close, but not quite. And, and of course, same, same thing as before, Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi 3s aren't really in the running. Uh, in the Livermore Loops benchmark, it produces a number of results. It does a minimum and it does a maximum, and then it does like a harmony mean, a geo mean, and an average. So, like we had said before, the geo mean isn't uh, is the is the one that's reported. But if you look at the max ones here, uh, clearly <laughs> the Ubuntu is definitely trouncing Raspbian. Um, but let's, you know, uh, I mean, we, I think we know the reason for that, right? So, uh, so I, my conclusion is yes, the Ubuntu is by far the faster operating system. Uh, the Raspbian um, uh, MFLOPS 226, 226, that's, uh, that's faster than a Cray 1. Uh, the Raspbian 4, 1.1 gigaflops, that's almost as fast as a Cray 2. Uh, the RP3, 496 MFLOPS, call it 500. It's 300 megaflops short of the uh, Cray YMP. And then the uh, uh, Ubuntu 1.9 gigaflops, that's also, that's really on target with the max setting of the Cray 2. It's not close to the Cray, the YMP though, but pretty amazing for uh, such a little device, <laughs> I think anyway. Uh, Raspbian with 32-bit kernel apps are slower, definitely, than 64. I think we can safely conclude that. We have shown that. Uh, the Raspbian GCC version 8 versus 9.2, I don't really have a good answer for that question. I, I, I don't see enough difference that would explain a difference in compiler. So I'm going to leave that question open. If you guys have any suggestions of, of some benchmarks I can use to maybe hone that down a little bit and figure it out, I'm going to have to get both of the platforms up to a 64-bit so that I'm comparing apples to apples. There is not a Ubuntu 32-bit uh, version that I could find, um, or maybe I just didn't want to find it. Yeah, I think actually there is. I, I just ignored it. I guess I could do that. I could bring them both down to 32-bit and then do the comparison. Uh, the RP Cortex-53 versus 72, I think there's no contest that the 72 is much faster there. So I think it's pretty safe to consume uh, to presume that uh, it, it is definitely a better buy to get the RP4, uh, and and then I would load Ubuntu on it on the full 64 if I was gonna if I'm gonna keep running it. Also, I would can I would definitely do that for the RP5 three as well. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video uh, and. Uh, uh, again, let me know in the comments if you have some suggestions of how I might be able to uh, hone this down a little bit to try to determine the difference because 9.2 is supposed to be a lot faster, a lot more efficient than the older GCC, and, and I'm interested to see how that actually would shake out. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and as always, hope to see you again real soon, and bye for now.